Hi, and good morning, everybody. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, and head coach in the Northwood Timberwolves, Leonard Haynes, as we welcome you to the third week of Northwood Replay here on MCTV. Uh, this year, we've had an opportunity to uh, start one on the road. It was a loss down in Ohio. Uh, we had our home opener a week ago, a non-conference game as well uh, at Han Stadium. And we again surrendered some points early, Coach, and uh, a slow start two weeks in a row has proved uh, uh, to be a challenge certainly for your offense to get points on the board and get back into games, but it's also brought up some highlights in your defense. We're going to talk a little more detail about the game with some stats, but Rich and I and you, I think, talked about it early this morning. Your defense was put in some positions early where they had to defend red zone defense, small set of real estate to work with, and they came to play from about halfway through the first quarter for the balance of that game, a stellar game by your defense, we felt. Yeah, I thought they did a good job stepping up. You know, just see them kind of come of age now. It's good because we have some young guys, especially in the back end. But, you know, we were kicking right into the win, you know, right. at one point. We had a stiff win, and our punter, I thought, did a good job. But, you know, to play on that end of the field, the short field like we did, our defense really came through, and they, they pretty – they shined, I thought, you know, a, a, through the game once they started to settle in. And so that was good to see because you always want to see some improvement. Right. And um, now we can't give up stuff early. <laughs> yeah. And then decide to wake up. But, you know, I love the progress that we're making. When we talked last week, it was about getting your guys ready because when we were down in Ohio two weeks ago, uh, you said you were going to take last week and get your guys at the snap of the ball when they ran out of the, the Timberwolf and they got ready to play their first home opener that you needed them ready at the beginning. I don't yeah. feel that they weren't yeah. ready, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you're two scores down again yeah. and you're mm -hmm. playing in the hole. Uh, I know that uh, uh, that conversation took place because you shared with us last week, a week ago today, mm -hmm. that that was a preparation. We know it's a 60-minute game and then some, even mm -hmm. if you're in a close. And both these ball games have been close. Right. Uh, did you feel that they came out of the shoot ready to play? For you know, the I think snap? from an energy standpoint, yes, I thought we did. And but again, you know, same thing happened this past weekend, like you did the previous week. It's the team marches right down the score. Right. So it's not you can't warm up and try to say all right now I got that out of my system now let's now let's play football so I don't know what that is uh, you know to be honest sure because we preach it playing 60 minutes again they stepped it up you know I guess that's the positive they stepped it up towards you know at the third third quarter or second third quarter and, and kind of got things going defensively speaking but just in general as a whole team we have to come out ready to go period right. and, and it's really just uh, uh, doing the little things right you know, because when we look back, there's a lot of little things. A bus here in the secondary, uh, someone not filling a, a, a gap in, in terms of run fits, right. things of that nature. That's what's got. That's what's gotten us, you know, into this disposition. So if we take care of those little things, we'll be much better right things going right. forward. And I'm sure, you know, as coaches, you don't ever want to dwell <clears throat> for very long on the loss. You right. want to look forward. Exactly. So. What are the, other than the positives you just told us, is there anything else you told your team to get it behind you and let's go play for the next week? Or Yeah, we always talk about, hey, it's 24 hours and that's who coaches, players, and you got 24 hours to get over it. And, and once we review the game on Sunday, we put it to rest, now we're on to the next game. So yes, we don't, we don't do well in that you know, as much. You know, back in the day, I think I used to really, you <laughs> know, those like 48 hours. Like four years. <laughs> but, but, you know, we try to get over and move to the next one because, look, we have eight games left. You know, we have to move on to the next one. You have to forget about it and move on. Coach, also kudos to the defense. I, again, like Dale said, I thought they did a great job yeah. of uh, stepping up, uh, playing their hearts out. And, the minors were balanced. They had a great offense, or great rushing, great passing. Coming in there, they've been averaging 500 plus yards. Of and so both sides of the years. ball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, both sides of the ball. We did. A, you know, we stopped the rush and the pass. Mm -hmm. uh, they were averaging a lot more yards than what we gave up. So. Yeah, they were. We knew they were going to be a good football team. There was much improved from the year before when we played them, and we knew that. And uh, starting quarterback was back. Those receivers are back. Uh, 
running back was back, and the defense uh, was much improved, I thought. You know, and I, I think they added a couple spots uh, defensive line-wise. and So they were a good football team. So much to their credit, you know, they did a good job versus us. Sure. Yeah. And we make a reference uh, pretty, pretty frequently, at least on the radio and on the net when we do the games on Saturday. They sure grow players big around the country. <laughs> and Missouri S&T was not an exception. You guys run into some sizable lines, and I think mm -hmm. your, your quickness and your athleticism, both offensively and defensively, lend to being able to defeat the big guys. But each game is one lost on each of those lines. Am I right or am I right? Oh, yeah, it all starts up front. You sure. Know, I'm a big believer in that. I'm a defensive line yes, guy. You are. <laughs> and so if you're not stout up front, if you're not tough up front, physical up front, man, those games are won and lost up front. So uh, so we definitely, you know, preach that and talk about that. But, you know, we just got to match physicality with physicality. Anytime we, and obviously we, we're playing conference games now in the GLIAC. Yeah, here so, we go. So here we go. And now, hey, it's going to be a battle every week. With, uh, with your offense, again, a little bit sluggish on the front end. Of course, uh, your season starter, uh, Joey Garbarino, out with injury. Uh, Grant Dunachek steps in, and uh, Grant ends up having a fairly reasonable day. He picks up 77 yards yeah. on the ground. He had some touchdown. Uh, uh, he had a pass to uh, Landless that got you on the board. You got yourself right back in the thick of things again, uh, third quarter going into the fourth. And uh, um, I, I felt again that the rhythm started to come later rather than sooner for him. But again, you're playing behind the eight ball. So is is it something different on the sideline that, because uh, uh, we've never played with the lead in 2018. Is yeah. that something, is there a dynamic about getting a lead or answering the bell? Because when we scored, it seems like now the opposition has come right back and put together a big drive or had a big play mm -hmm. to just kind of negate what we just put together in a play series. Yeah, actually, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I caught a timeout when the team started to drive. They were on a 16 play drive. Right. And um, I actually called a timeout to talk to the defense, really, just to say, hey, you got to understand the situation. Because we were in it a week before with Tiffin, if you recall. I do. And all of a sudden, we kind of let them march down the field and not understanding, and maybe they did understand the situation. I'm saying they did not. But at that critical moment, we got to get a stop to get the ball back for our offense because now we have some momentum going. Right. We have some momentum going, and if we can get a stop, man, that gives us a chance now to go back down there and score. You know, and all you want is a chance. And, and that's what I was challenging our guys to do. Now we're holding to a field goal, but then now it's a little bit out of reach at that point because we're, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah, now you're so, down 11. Yeah, <laughs> and so, but our kids always fight, man. I, I'm so proud of them. They always no fight. They, they play all the way to the end. Well, and Coach, I'm sure you agree with this rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to get into rhythm offensively because we had some turnovers. We yeah. put it on the ground four yeah. times, gave it up three yeah. of those four. So hard to sustain rhythm. Yes. And when you can sustain rhythm, then things change offensively for yeah, you. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. And we got to take care of the ball. We got to do a better job. When we have those opportunities, we're down in the red zone. We got to be able to finish and capitalize. Right. And so that's huge, as you know. You know, that's a big swing. So it, the outcome could have been a lot different. You know, we take care of the ball. You know, we get in there and score. Now we're looking at a different ball game. And so we have to uh, understand that. And, and our guys understand that. Critical moments those time of the games you have to take care of the football well and you know we're talking about an 11 point loss in it until uh, the final drive of the game really which put it to two score difference in in uh, and out of our hands 27 16 in that loss you always have highlights in a game we're gonna have a chance to, chance to uh, take a look at some of those here coach, right. and find the bright spots that take us to week three in the opening of the GLIAC let's take a look at some of your highlights yeah <clears throat> All right, here we start things off with a punt. We thought our special teams played a, a lot better this week as well, but this is a great punt by Punter Blitz. Uh, Blitz, uh, freshman for us, true freshman, and we recovered that fumble. That ball kind of got caught up there in the wind, and we were able to get that back, so that was great. And here's the field goal by uh, uh, Dave Reiser. Right. And, um, and so now we've shipped over the defense. These are guys rallying to the ball here on a little quick screen. You know, that's great pursuit. The ball, and that's what you want. That ball comes out. Demi does a great job. Demetri Abro is stripping that ball out. And then you see here on offense, we, we're getting a little aid from um, <laughs> Corey Burgett to get the quarterback in there to get that touchdown. Four wheel drive. You, you love that. And here's a sack by Demetri. And uh, I believe that's uh, is that Simeon. Yeah, yeah, that's Simeon. Good job of Simeon. And here's a punt that gets caught up in a win. And, 
Martinez here, Christian lets it bounce and then he kind of just takes it up the middle and out to the sideline. As we're going, I thought he should have scored. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 then, <laughs> and he steps out of bounds there. I don't know what was going on. I thought he was going to come back and get in that end zone. Uh, but that was a great job by Christian in that. And it was so good, I think uh, SID put it on there again. <laughs> so, so all you people out there in the podcast land, <laughs> <laughs> We're the showing the play, play again. With the same result. With the same Coach results. Still wants him to score. <laughs> he still wanted to score. Nothing's changed. <laughs> but here's a great, great block uh, for our field goal to, uh, block unit here to get the ball back. And you can see our guys excited there on the sideline. Coach Arnold down there excited. Special team coordinator. We see that again. And we got that again. That's a high <laughs> highlight, too. Yeah, exactly. Thanks the SID back. loves it. And uh, and so so we have some good we have some good things. and. All I ask is we just keep getting better each each week. And here is a drive by our offense. It's a great catch by Gary Landless from Grant Dunachek. You know, to start the drive here. And then here's a fourth down and long play where Grant scrambles around here a little bit, steps up. I thought he was going to try to run it, but he steps up, throws it, and touchdown again. Strong to across his body. Yeah, too. yeah. So, left and right -handed. Oh, yeah. So there's some good things there. Here's an <clears throat> That'd take us back to the beginning. That's the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the punt again. <laughs> it was. But. So again, we're always able to find these uh, you know, these diamonds in the rough within your game. So it's not like you guys are trying to recreate a wheel here right. that you've been working on for three months uh, with summer ball and as things got closer. So uh, I, I got to believe you have said year after year in, in our association together, Coach, that it, it really boils down to if Northwood plays Northwood football, you can compete and beat anybody on the other side of that football. Yeah. And it really boils down to when the game settles in and the, the momentum's going both offensively and defensively for you, you guys are a solid ball club that yeah. doesn't have a bunch of holes. Right. It's when those start to reveal themselves in a play, in a turnover, in a decision sometimes, yeah. that's really where the good teams and the GLIAC as we start and yeah. those in our pre this league is full of good teams. Yes. So yes. where's uh, where's that bring you now as uh, we're going to be able to take a look at some of the matchups in the GLIAC here yeah. over the last weekend as preparation for the GLIAC. Where's that bring you to week three? What uh, What's the bright spot for you? Bright spot? Hey, it's just like you said. It's, you know, Northwood always have a chance to win if Northwood don't beat Northwood. Right so, and our guys understand we take care of the little things, and that's something I always preach. Our coach staff preaches, you know, attention to detail. We say call it ATD. Hey, we can beat anybody. Yeah. And if we just do what we do and do it well, we'll be fine. Because we're a good football team. It's just not showing on the record. Let's take a look uh, week two of uh, 2018 around the GLIAC and that yeah. action. Yeah, by, uh, obviously, s and and Northwood, North, you know, we come on and lose an end of that. Uh, with 27 to 16, Davenport squeaked out a win over uh, Wisconsin. 2 and Oshkosh. 0, Davenport is. Yeah, and uh, I believe that's a Division three school, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. And Saginaw Valley, a non-conference game there, beat Walsh uh, 45 to 10. Michigan Tech 31 to 30 over Hillsdale. I heard, chance, I had, I heard Hillsdale had a chance to win the game and um, with a field goal, and I guess they missed the field goal. And they, mm -hmm. Tech 2 and 0 coming in. Tech 2 and 0, yep. Northern Michigan uh, beats uh, UT Pyramid, if I'm saying that right. And Ferris over uh, Finley for the 9-13. Indianapolis 28-6 over Wayne State. And Ohio Dominican 24-17 over Ashland. So these boys are all tuning up. And here's our overall records for you coming into uh, GLIAC action, Coach. Yeah, Davenport right now. I mean, this is, you know, four or five teams at 2-0 in the GLIAC. Davenport, Ferris, Grand Valley, Michigan Tech, uh, Saginaw Valley, Wayne State 1-1. Northern Michigan 101, Ashland Northwood at the bottom there for right now and 0 and 2. Okay. And that loss, uh, second consecutive week for Ashland, they're no longer hanging in the D2.com uh, top 25. They have disappeared from, from that shakedown as they were hanging out there in the preseason polls and so forth. Right. So right. Uh, Grand Valley still doing it, and your opposition uh, in about uh, 47 hours equals another one, but we understand that means nothing. That means nothing. Northwood being Northwood is, 
is good for Northwood. Exactly. So we have taken a look at what was, and even though you only let your players deal with that for 24 hours, four days after the fact, we took you back for a minute and appreciate you, Coach Haynes, yeah. uh, going back to what was. Yeah. More importantly, we're going to talk about what is, and that's an opportunity for your team to recoup, visit the films, and make some adjustments in this week's sure. practice. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first, and as important as uh, what we do on Northwood Replay, the rest of that, uh, we're going to take his shoulder pads off. We're going to take the helmet, stra unstrap it from the top of his head, and reveal to you one of the most exciting players the last couple of years at Northwood University. And it's a wide receiver by definition, but there ain't a thing this fellow won't uh, won't strap on for his coach and his team. We're going to introduce you to uh, Alex Pacuzzi out of Macomb, and he is going to be on our set right after this important message on MCTV. With an amazing studio, fantastic equipment, and a stellar production trailer, there's no better time to become an MCTV producer or volunteer. You can even make your own television show. Check out some of our upcoming training dates and call our station to get started today. For more information on training or anything else related to MCTV or MGTV, make sure you check out the city's website and don't forget to like MCTV on Facebook. Hi everybody, welcome back. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, and as promised, Alex Pacuzzi, one of Northwood's wide receivers. And uh, again, uh, rumor had it I might have uh, made him sound really good before he got here, but I'm here to tell you, if you want to watch uh, football action at the collegiate level, you come to Northwood University. We're doing that this weekend, by the way, as Ferris, uh, the Bulldogs, make their way to Hans Stadium. Uh, you won't find anybody more vested in the process than this young fellow across the, uh, the table from us. Alex, it's great to have you here this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You bet. Uh, De La Salle High School, Macomb, Michigan. Uh, uh, your time at the Wood, you're in your junior year. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the creative nature of being a wide receiver in a uh, in a wood bone offense where options and short passes to the flats and some things given up late. How does your role, how do, how do you see that adding to the value of your college experience in an offense like what Northwood brings to the table for you? Well, as, as you guys see, we don't get the ball at receiver as much as maybe a spread team does and at the collegiate level, but regardless, we have a job to do on every single play, whether it's right. blocking or catching the ball when our opportunity is presented to us. But, you know, that's the thing, too, is when we do get our opportunities to catch the ball and make plays, we got to take advantage of them and make big plays and move the ball for our offense. And like I said, block when we don't get the ball and get uh, opportunities going for our wingbacks and quarterbacks or whoever may be running the ball because, as we know, our offense is just as unpredictable for the fans right. as it is for us. So. That's why I love you so much, Alex. <clears throat> your all-purpose yards are awesome. Yeah. I mean, two games in, you've got 221 all-purpose yards. You don't get a lot of credit for those all-purpose yards because they come on maybe a punt return or a mm. kick return. Or, you know, th right. they come in various ways. Your motor never stops. You're out there running the field hard. I yeah. love it. Uh, we love calling your name in the booth, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Alex during the break that actually if I can't make out the number of the guy who just made the big play, I give it to Alex because his name's fun to say. <laughs> and you got your hands in a play somewhere, yeah. whether it's uh, you got the pill in your hand or whether you've set up for the guy who's got the pill. But, yeah, last week, what do you got? Six return special teams, 176 yards total. Uh, you're catching the football. You know, you're, you're in an offense that doesn't necessarily call on you guys a lot. You got five targets. You got five catches. And, and you're moving the ball in, in big situations to, to go. So uh, you're 0-2. And I know as of Sunday, You've got no losses coming into this week that you guys are now 0-0 coming right. into to Friday's game. Uh, as a junior uh, this year, uh, you are being looked at by, uh, you guys have more freshmen on your team now, uh, true freshmen. I think there's seven freshmen that are suiting with you guys and going. You have become quickly, uh, with your type of play and your attitude, you are one that's looking being looked at by these younger guys to mentor and be a leader, even in your junior role, because you're a standout in what you do, both special teams and offensively. Uh, how important of a role is that for you, and, and how how do you foresee that as being a, a, a target for these youngsters? It's huge. It's um, it's a big culture standpoint from us. You know, I like to think back when I was a freshman at Northwood, all bright-eyed coming into college. You know, and I had guys like Mark Morris and Dan yep. Richmond and guys like that to mentor me when I was young, kind of show me the ropes when I was there. So. 
almost try to pay it back a little bit. You know, those guys did it for me, and we have had a big culture change since I have gotten to Northwood as a freshman. And part of that culture change being getting our team to be one close knit unit. You know, not having any any social groups or cliques or anything like that in the locker room. So, being an older guy and just because you're an older guy doesn't make you a leader by any chance. Right. And, um, mm-hmm. For me, you know, I like to try to get all the younger guys to hang out with older guys. I, I think last week, you know, we, we cooked out at a buddy's house and we had a couple of true freshmen there hanging out with them, juniors and seniors and stuff like that. So aside from football, too, we try to all be close. And as far as a mentor standpoint, you know, I just want to help these guys feel as welcome as possible because I know when people are at their most comfortable, you know, they, they play their best for sure. Too. And that's what it's all about, teammates, being a team, Absolutely. being together, closeness. How do you like playing on the new turf? We haven't had a chance to ask a player that yet. <laughs> it's awesome. It is, it's different for sure. You know, I remember I got the call over the summer. We didn't even know we were getting new turf and we all went home for the summer. So I got the call from Coach Haynes and Coach uh, Z Reeps over the summer saying we're getting turf. and. It was shocking at first, honestly. It was a prank. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never thought I'd see the day we got turf before I graduated, but right. it's awesome. It's beautiful. You know, it's brand new and uh, definitely uh, amping up the facilities at Northwood, so it's awesome to play on for sure. Operations management is your target uh, now in your junior year. Uh, what lies in the 30 seconds we have left, Alex? What lies ahead for you following Northwood University and what you're learning on and off the field? Well, uh, as who of knows, right now, right? yeah, who knows, sure. honestly. Uh, I've had a couple internships with uh, Penske and uh, a company called J-Bell back home. Okay. So uh, hopefully just continue to search for jobs and maybe uh, I've been trying to get into a little bit more of the sports world, work in uh, departments like player personnel and try to get in that kind of aspect. Sure. So right now I'm just trying to cool. keep all my options open and see what uh, see where the cards play. Well, you're young. If you can be my age and still have options open, which by the way I do, uh, <laughs> you uh, you just continue to shine and uh, awful excited about uh, this Saturday, one o'clock at Hand Stadium. Yep. You uh, are hosting uh, in the GLIAC opener of the Bulldogs out of Ferris State and uh, we wish you nothing but best in, in health and uh, that one lump sum team attitude that you guys carry. Thank so, you. Thanks for being thanks here. Thanks for your time, Alex. Thank Good luck. We will bring Coach Haynes back out and uh, Alex has got his seat warmed up. We're going to bring the coach back out and take a look inside the numbers a little bit for Ferris State Bulldogs, see what they bring to the table and more importantly what Northwood brings to the table come Saturday. See where you're at. Hi, welcome back everybody. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, and Coach Leonard Haynes of the Northwood Timberwolves as we are in episode three of Northwood Replay 2018. Coach, uh, we had a uh, young fellow that plays on the O side of the ball for you, Alex Pacuzzi. A little inside information on that uh, that young fella. And as everybody you bring in to this studio and give us the opportunity to spend that brief few minutes with him, yeah. uh, he again just absolutely shines as one of your quality kids. Yeah, very quality, man. First class kid out of uh, Warren De La Salle High School down there in Macomb. And um, just a hard worker, blue collar type kid. And, you know, you heard him talk about, you know, when they're not getting the ball, they have to block things of that nature and, and it, because of the nature of our offense. But he does a tremendous job, man. He's one of the leaders of our football team. And I just love his work ethic and what he brings to practice every day into games. He's, he's uh, all about, you know, getting the team better and getting himself better, in which he has. You know, he's grown leaps and miles from where he was as a freshman. So Guys like that him. are infectious. Are yeah, they, right? very infectious. So. We talk about it all the time in the booth, uh, mm-hmm. away from the play, still working hard, mm-hmm. special teams, yeah. big all-purpose yards, just – he brings a lot. Yeah, he brings a lot to the <clears> table. <throat> He's becoming a uh, threat, I believe, with the kickoff return unit yes. for us. And um, yep. receiver-wise, he's, again, he's made some big plays for us already as a receiver. And um, so it, it, the sky's the limit for Al, I do believe. Uh, and a great young man. Yeah, great Indeed. young man. Uh, another one. Oh, yeah. Uh, you just keep, oh, I think you keep bringing a ringer, and you just keep bringing kids oh, that, no. that match that, uh, which is how you guys recruit. That's how you, yeah. that's how you recruit. You're yeah. looking for a quality lad first to second. Uh, yes, secondly, a football player, really, yes, sir. because you make that mold. It, it shows, Coach, yeah. it shows. Uh, Ferris State, yeah. uh, currently ranked five in some of the polls, ranked nine in other national polls. Yeah. Uh, they've got a couple of blowouts under their belt and some non-conference mm-hmm. stuff. Actually, they played a conference uh, game this last week against Finley, mm-hmm. uh, and they scored early. And often, 31 and answered. Uh, they went on to, to, to win the ball game um, uh, handily last Saturday right. at their home. Um, a little bit about Finley is we're going to take a look at this week's schedule and we'll see our match coming down for down the list there. Yeah, this week's schedule, we have Davenport versus Michigan Tech, Saginaw Valley at uh, Truman, uh, Northern Michigan versus Grand Valley, 
uh, Northwood versus Ferris, Ashland uh, versus Wayne State. And uh, so now all the conference games are starting to happen this week. We open up a conference games this week, and uh, so it's feast or famine. All right. <laughs> all right. Coach, I got to ask you, what do you do to prepare for somebody like Ferris? And what I mean by that is <clears throat> they're pretty balanced offense and yeah. defense. They got uh, most of the returners back on mm -hmm. offense. I know yeah. on defense they're pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, do you try to take one part of the game away? I mean, what do you do to prepare? Well, you know, for a team like that, they're very talented. You know, they, they're strong on both sides of the ball, uh, offense and defense. And so, again, it, it just gets down to the details and doing our job and not trying to play outside yourself. Just do what we do and do it well. And, again, they, they're very talented. We all know that. And um, ranked in the nation, so they've done a great job over there and building that program up. So, But for us, we just got to come in there and do what we do. And I would say that to no end. Our right. guys just do what we do. Don't get caught up in the hype of, you know, fair and spin ranked. Just come in there and let's play a great football game doing what we do and let the chips fall where they may. If I may, we had our sports luncheon at NADA last week and you were one of our presenters. Nice job with that. <laughs> uh, you brought in a couple of players and uh, Dimitri Abro was, was one of those players. Yeah. And I asked the question from uh, uh, when given the opportunity was, uh, boy, you guys are going to hit Ferris and then you're going to uh, then you're going to play Ashland and then you got Grand Valley. I mean, at that time, they're all through rank. What's that mean? You get to take, take a look at some of the best teams in the country, and they're all right here on your home turf in the GLIAC. And I got an interesting answer, and I think it's one that you admit and all your players do. It don't matter who's on the other side of the ball. If we play Northwood football, we can beat anybody on a mm -hmm. given Saturday. Mm -hmm. I believe that to be true, mm -hmm. and so do your players. But you are going to be highlighted with, uh, you know, this is a top five opponent. Absolutely. And uh, this means you get to play in the dance. I mean, you're mm -hmm. going to be playing guys that, uh, like yourselves, see postseason in their future. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's a different energy for your, your oh, team, too. Oh, that? yeah, that's automatic energy, guys. You know, they want to play against the best. They want to beat the best. Right, so right. that's why you line up play on Saturdays, you know, you college betcha. football. So so, you know, we wouldn't have it any other way. And like I said, the GLIAC is one of the best conferences in the nation. Yes, sir. And so, hey, let's, we, we already know we're going to face great competition every week. So, hey. And you want it. And, and you, we want yeah. it. And that's the way you want it. And uh, it's not going to be easy. So right. we got to go out there and earn it. So our guys are ready for the task. Well, this Saturday, it's uh, Ferris State. The Bulldogs come to town 2-0. The Wood uh, takes them on in their home turf. <coughs> no pun intended there. 0-2. But the GLIAC is, a, it's, it's the second season within the season. And we always play tight games with Ferris. So yeah. Ten points a year ago, one point the year before that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we healthy? What's uh, What's Joey's status? Joey uh, is is day by day right now with Joey, and so we'll, we'll see. Um, he's he's has practice, and uh, he's been looking pretty good. So we just got to keep him healthy, and, and it's we game time decisions to what we do with Joey. But uh, right now he has been practicing, and it looks pretty good. So. Uh, that, that's up to the trainers and, and Joe, but you let Joe tell it. Joe, Joe be playing. So. <laughs> right, right. In the final minute, Coach, uh, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of the impact of the home field advantage. And we had one last weekend, certainly, as the fan base came out and supported. We had uh, Hand Stadium home side. Uh, that was 90% full. So we've yeah. got, you know, 12, 1,300 people there finally in your earbuds, mm -hmm. and they're finally hearing the cheer. Mm -hmm. uh, these big games that come at home, uh, the student and uh, community turnout I thought was great. That's a motivator, is it not? Oh, for it's, your guys? it's a motivator. You know, you want to play for them, you know, and, right. and put on a good show for them. And so, you know, it was great to see coming out there, first home game, man, seeing everybody out there, out there being supportive for this football team. And uh, we so much appreciate it, too. And right. so, and uh, we just got to do our part. Your honorary That's captain, great. did that uh, carry some value on the sideline early on, your honorary captain yeah, last week? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Teresa George, uh, you know, she's been instrumental in this program for years, she man, and uh, she does a lot of things behind the scenes, and if people don't know, man, she's a great lady, you know, yeah. to, to have uh, behind the scenes helping out doing some stuff that other people wouldn't do otherwise. Best so. of luck to her, yeah. and Godspeed, I know we all had a chance to wish her that. We had her up in the booth and tried mm -hmm. to get an inside the huddle uh, conversation at halftime. Yeah, uh, saw that. Came, huh, did you see that? <laughs> and she didn't give away any secrets. Uh, <laughs> you guys settled down after she came in at, at the half. 
1 o'clock. It's on yeah. WMPX 1490 AM. A pregame starts about 1245. GoNorthwood.com. Yeah. You can get some, some live video and live audio of our broadcast uh, on the web as well as uh, the broadcast. And uh, as always, Coach, coming into the weekend 0 0, nothing but the best. Stay healthy Thank and continue you. to lead these young men as you've proven uh, is, is of value to you. And that's, that's important to us as Northwood football fans. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Good luck, Coach. Looking thank forward you. to it. Yes. We invite you to Hand Stadium this Saturday. Just gave you the info. Come see us. Come enjoy the campus and see all the new things that Northwood's doing for you. We're the only show that tells you to go away mad, and we're going to do it again. Go away and make a difference. Have a great day, everybody.